What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great, finally, freaking Friday. Uh, we'll be doing our live stream in about an hour from now. And um, I can't wait for that because you guys know how much I love to do the live streams. You know, all those trolls that come in here. Oh, my goodness. I just love it it all no for real um actually i love my real fans and stuff that are here with me and stuff so we have the questions uh the dallas cowboys will be getting nine and a half million dollars tomorrow uh you know because of the post june first cuts they'll be able to use that money along with the 3.8 million dollars that they have right now and um, this could be a spending spending spree. You know, they got some draft picks. They could go ahead and they could do some uh, uh, trades. They got a little cash where they could sign some people and so on. Now, what I find amazing, actually, and we'll go into this more tonight during the live stream, is it seems like the turn is beginning to happen. The Cowboys have been killed. People have been talking about, you know, the Cowboys, you know, they might be third in the division. Washington may end up stepping up and this, that, and the other, and how bad they are. You know, Dak Prescott's garbage. Zeke Elliott's old. Micah Parsons overrated and stuff. But now, all of a sudden, you see Vegas has the Cowboys favored in 14 of their 17 games. Uh, you're hearing people that are putting them in the conversation of possible contenders um, for the NFC Championship game. Um, you've got people saying Dak Prescott is the top quarterback in the NFC. And, of course, we are still dealing with contracts. Now, we're hearing that the Cowboys do not want Dak Prescott to hit free agency. Um, the reality is, if Dak Prescott wants to hit free agency, there's nothing they can do about it. The only thing they can do is pay the man a, a contract, a number that he can't refuse. So this is Tom Paceros, uh, who's on the uh, Rich Eisen show. His take on the contract extension for Dak. Let's listen in. Boys, and that's not just because people are, are interested in it, 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 because they're the Dallas Cowboys. This is a, a team with Super Bowl aspirations and a roster that can win the Super Bowl. There's just no question about it. Yeah. They have a quarterback that can win the Super Bowl. They've got a pass rusher that can win the Super Bowl. They've got the weaponry with CeeDee Lamb. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on with the running back position. I don't know what the hell has been going on. What has been going on? There are they capped out because they've made they they put money in all of the players that they've drafted well enough to to keep. I I, I don't know why they didn't supplement they, their roster any better than they did, or the old face names that were available. We'll start with the fact oh. that Dax on the books cap wise for like sixty million but this they year. Can, they, they can, they could not, and they could fifty five. They, 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 they absolutely 55. could reduce it by doing a new contract with. But them. why why not? They have taken an organizational philosophy, it certainly appears, to kick the can down the road on all decisions right now. Because and they've been doing this for years. Okay. If you talk about, look at the number of free agents that <coughs> left in this offseason. Some of your core players, like their center, Tyler Biotish, who goes to a division rival in Washington, follows Dan Quinn. That's the type of guy that a lot of teams would proactively do the deal a year before free agency. Lock him up. He's been huge for Dak. He's a really good player, and he's going to get paid a boatload. Instead, they wait, and sure enough, somebody's willing to pay them a lot more. I mean, right now, I can't think of another situation in recent NFL history where a team goes into the regular season, forget CeeDee Lamb for a second, with their head coach and their quarterback both in contract years. Mm. And you can't tag Dak because it would technically be a third tag because they had to tag him a second time to buy themselves time for the paperwork on the extension a few years ago. Right. So you can't tag him the third time because it'd be like $80 million. So Dak is a true, he's in the... Wait a minute. I, I thought he was supposed to be an NFL insider or an expert. You can't tag Dak because he's got a no tag clause in his contract. And he's not $60 million, He's 55. He's 55. The fudge is going on here? The position Kirk Cousins was a year ago where he's going to be a true unrestricted free agent. Mike McCarthy, you could end up winning the Super Bowl, and Mike would be available to go to any other team. 
And then you've got, obviously, CeeDee Lamb. You've got Micah Parsons. These are, again, deals you've seen Miami be proactive doing That's deals. You've I'm seen saying. Philadelphia getting ahead of the game. But Dallas's philosophy has been, we don't need to do something now, so we will wait. And it's burned them in a lot of different cases. I mean, they tagged Tony Pollard. He played on the tag last year. He didn't have the best year, but he was coming off a pretty severe injury, and then right. he walks in free agency. He lost a couple of your pass rushers. The left tackle, that was... It was probably time on that. They were willing to to move on from that, but that's another important part of your team. Yeah, it's it's puzzling. I would say that. I've heard really good feedback on the rookie class, how good they think this group has a chance to be, and they're going to need them to be really good because they're all going to have to play. Well, that's the whole idea of a team that has Super Bowl aspirations and had a terrific season last year, regular season last year, that the reaction to being one and done in Green Bay is we're just going to freeze it. We're going to freeze it. We're going to go draft as well as we possibly can. And we're going to let everybody around here know that if you want to stay here, you have to win here (sighs) this year. And I understand that that puts the lid on a boiling pot potentially and that it can actually work and it can hit. But it's a very expensive way of doing business that can also <laughs> backfire the on the way somebody handles that pressure or it can backfire on the way of even in ultimate success, you put the trophy in the case and obviously that's the whole idea. But now everyone's going to want even more and other people are going to be on top of their contracts at other s- spots. I mean, you know CD Lamb's going to have to get paid. Right. Mm-hmm. You know Micah Parsons is going to have to get paid. Mm-hmm. Dak is more of an ish situation, I guess, because the quarterback might be, the in quarterback. their estimation, the reason why they're not getting to the NFC Championship game. And if they're willing to reset and go back into the free agent market with somebody completely different or reset and go into the draft and get somebody, that's a risky play as well. Or you go and you redo the deals for everybody in a timely fashion so it's not going to be as expensive as it is to wait Mm -hmm. and then you now might be able to reconfigure your cap to go get derrick henry and take some of the pressure off your quarterback or go out and get fill in the blank other um defensive pass rusher right you know uh i'll just throw it out again i mean daniel hunter's in the state right now just not for them right I, I, i'm just throwing names who are available that you could then bring in <coughs> if you want to go all in one year go for it you had the team that did as well as it did in last year's regular season i i i feel like i'm a broken record on this subject matter here well because nothing's happened the, we have to keep having the same conversation because they still haven't done anything they signed eric kendricks after he got cut by the chargers they brought back zeke they signed royce freeman and then they had the draft. And that's the extent of the moves that they've made in this offseason. I would say this. I mean, this is not the first time Jerry has had a head coach in the final year of his deal. Jason Garrett did it, too. Um, I think that, you know, you've got a head coach that was won 12 games last three years. Obviously, brutal in the playoff game. They just weren't ready to go. For one reason or another, it was a disaster from the start in that game against Green Bay. But Mike's a, a really good and highly accomplished coach who now has so much pressure on his shoulders, not just because of his contract situation, but because you're basically saying, hey, we didn't bring in anybody veteran-wise to help other than, again, Kendricks, who knows Mike Zimmer's defense. They made the defensive coordinator switch because Dan Quinn moves to Washington. They bring in Zim, who's very established. But everybody's on, you know, the last year of their contracts. And, oh, yeah, you're going to have to play all these young guys. That's a lot on people's shoulders all at the same time. You know, we'll see exactly how that hits. Yeah, you have to play these young guys. Well, it's been working for them at least getting 12 wins in the regular season. And maybe, just maybe, I'm trying to be an optimist here, um, having Mike Zimmer on the defense will keep them accountable. All right, good people, I'll see you in about an hour. Peace out.